So my name is Gabrielle Merchant. I am a graduate student here at UMass in the audiology department. Um, we're at UMass Amherst right now. We're in Tobin Hall in the psychoacoustics lab. Um, and it's one of the laboratories that the communication disorders department uses um, to study hearing loss. So the research that we're interested in this lab um, is how hearing loss and aging affects speech understanding. So we're interested in hearing loss in general, but most specifically how um, people understand speech and the ability for people to understand speech, especially in like noisy conditions. So at a cocktail party or um, in a big auditorium or a bus station or something like that. And how as we age and there may be cognitive changes or changes in the brain, um, how that's gonna also influence um, how we are able to understand speech in those settings. When I was really little, I remember wanting to be a neonatologist. Like, I ran around saying I want to be a neonatologist. And I think it's because I liked the idea of science and medicine, and I wanted to work with kids. Um, and then that kind of grew. I still really wanted to work with kids. But then there was something about deaf kids and hearing loss. And so I did my undergraduate work um, at Smith College, which is in Northampton, um, and then went from Smith and entered a PhD program at Harvard MIT. And so I combined basic science research with translational research, which means research that kind of has a direct um, human connection. We can see it being implemented in the clinic um, kind of in a very close future. And I really liked working with the patients a lot. Um, I really liked the clinical setting. And so I decided to go get another degree in clinical audiology so that I really could combine my passion for the clinic and um, patients with my research and teaching. I think the ultimate goal is really to help us better understand how and what goes into how people understand speech beyond just hearing. So we'll always start with a hearing test so we want to know um, where people's hearing is, how much hearing loss they have. Um, and then we often do a series of cognitive tasks. So this is our anechoic chamber. So what you don't realize is that we're in the basement and actually about a level down from the basement. So this is in the ground and grounded in the ground. And so what an anechoic chamber is, is, is a space where there should be no reflection. So no echoes, anechoic. Um, and so you can see that there's this acoustic foam on all the walls. It's on the ceiling. It's actually on the floor while I'm talking my sound and the sound coming out of my mouth and my voice is going to be directed in here and it's meant to like bounce back and forth and then ultimately be absorbed by what's in the back as opposed to being bounced outward like a hard surface would do. The participant will often be in a booth, either a soundproof booth or an anechoic chamber and they'll be asked to listen to speech um, with different kind of background noise. So sometimes the maskers will be just noise. Um, sometimes it'll be other people talking to kind of simulate a setting like a cocktail party. And they'll either be asked to repeat it to see if they understand it, or they'll be asked to localize it. So where did you hear a sound? Say we had sounds coming from all of these speakers and we were having an extra sound added to one and we wanted them to pick out where they heard the extra bleep from to see how they were localizing. They would press whichever button correlated with which speaker on this button box. So right now in the clinic, the majority of testing looks at everything up to the auditory nerve, which is kind of your ear, up to the very beginning of your brain. But when we think about how we understand speech, we know that the brain um, plays a big role in that. And so we're looking at how the whole pathway um, may be influencing how people understand speech so that down the line, we can treat people who have hearing loss um, more efficiently and have better um, treatments for them and better ways to approach their hearing loss. So if a patient comes in and says, I can't understand speech, and the problem isn't just that we need to make things louder, but that you know we may need to say that if they have issues with their processing speed, that you should also be telling people to slow down. Or if they have deficits in their working memory and their ability to remember chunks of information, then you should make sure that when you're talking to people, you ask them to pause, so you're only having to remember um, shorter chunks of things. So those types of things and strategies that we can help our patients um, figure out how to communicate better with the people around them. For me, like communication is so important to me that it's hard for me not to understand how people don't think that this is such a crucial thing for someone. And I think that when I see patients who lose their hearing, especially if someone loses their hearing suddenly, and they're like, oh my gosh, like I would have 
you just don't realize it until it happens to you or to you're exposed to someone who has lost that how crucial that sense is so not that curing AIDS or cancer wouldn't be wonderful but I think that you know hearing loss and helping people communicate and experience the world around them through hearing um, is a really essential part of life and I just got really interested in it and clung on tight never let go <laughs>